Hey, fish heads, good morning. TGIF, happy Friday, happy welcome to your weekend. I have shown you a quick walk around of the studio that I'm working in here at Bullshed Swim Baits, but I haven't really given you a comprehensive one or why I have what I have in my studio and some of the possible functions. So today, we're gonna take a quick look at what I have in the studio, why I've got these things, and how it can help you build a better studio for your airbrushing. As we walk in, you can immediately see the dark gray walls. And there's a lot of lighting going on right now only because there's a lot of times when I just need extra light in here. We're still in the process. Hopefully next week we should have the studio lighting in under here for better video shots on spray sessions. I've got ample light, but it's just weird and it's bouncing around. So one of the things that you'll notice is that the, the wall itself is super absorbent. You don't see a whole lot of light bouncing on that. Yeah, you can see the reflections from the bookcases and where the shadows would go normally, but this is a absolute flat, dark gray. It's actually called Starless Night, and it's a Home Depot bear paint, and it's a one and done. So that means that you can pretty much cover any color that's existing on your walls with this type of paint and it works out really well. So it, it drastically cuts down on bouncing light, which I really need to see colors true over here on the spray bench. Now we're gonna take a walk around from the right to the left, starting with what's on the bench, why it's there, and the compressor that's next to it. So this is a California Air Tools. It's an eight gallon, no oil in the tank. And it runs, depending on if you can catch a sale, it'll run somewhere around 150 to 180 dollars. It has to recharge itself every 30 minutes or so. And it's relatively quiet as far as those things go. So you can see the bullshad apron, which I rarely wear, and then just some wall ornaments. I've got some saltwater stuff. We're gonna be doing a little bit more saltwater in the coming year, and we'll get into that later. That's not gonna be on this video per se. The, the tubes, I've got a quick release, and there is a comprehensive video showing me setting this compressor, this very same type. It's, this is a different compressor. This is a brand new one for this shop. Um, but I still have my other one that's just a backup now. But it's got some speed releases. You could do a lot of things with this. You could pressure wash your house. You could uh, wash your car. You could put air in your tires. Or, but for this specific pur purpose, I use it for airbrushing. Now it has a gauge that's movable and adjustable here. And it's got a basic gauge there. I'm not going to get in the weeds with what's on the compressor. But it moves up to a second gauge that's got an air trap, moisture trap, that also helps me set right here at the bench. That's important because while I'm spraying, I'm gonna be spraying things at a couple of different levels most of the time. I'll be doing detail at a much reduced pressure than I would my base layers. So it's very convenient and it works out real well to have the pressure gauge and moisture trap right here. So that moves into a very long cable, which I most of the time I keep most of it looped around because I don't need that much. But I'm only running one here. Um, there's probably going to be a couple more here in the near future. A lot of guys get into having specific paints set up in cups so that they don't have to change it out. It's never really been a headache for me. I'm still able to do things like Bill has a couple of different ones set up in his studio. I haven't seen his studio. Um, but we do talk about different setups. So mine, the way I'm showing you that it's set up is not a, you must do it this way. It's just a guideline for what works for me. So you can take that information and turn it into something that is more practical and functional for you and your space when you're airbrushing. This is a 300 CF. It's almost 300. I, should, I shouldn't lie. It's like 285 CF, uh, which is the pressure or the, the suction power that gets it out. They cut through the wall on this fan. So it's to an exterior wall. So it helps just pull all the paint dust and all of the fumes and stuff out of this room while I'm airbrushing. And I normally airbrush with the door open 
with the fan on and when I'm not talking to you guys and I'm spraying, I have this 3M half face mask and I recharge my, but I put brand new cartridges in probably every month because I spray at least five days a week. But moving back over here, you guys want to hear the fan by itself. You'll be able to hear the difference, but it's not obnoxiously loud. I was thinking with something this powerful that it was going to be real loud. It's not. You guys can still hear my voice. I haven't raised my voice or changed the level of the voice that I'm speaking to you in. So that's not bad at all. Very impressed with it so far. It's really kept the dust down comparatively to the garage that I was working in. Um, that I converted at my old house in Arkansas. I, after two months, I have less dust in this smaller space than I did in a 20 by 20 garage. So, real impressed with this. You can pick them up at Home Depot. If somebody wants a link, I can certainly give it to you. I'm not affiliated. They don't sponsor me to talk about the fan, but I'm really impressed with its ability to draw air out of here pretty quick and keep the dust down. You still need to wear a respirator. You still need to wear a respirator. You absolutely still need to wear a respirator. And people are gonna, I know I'm gonna get comments on that one, that's okay. Um, it's, it's not a choice for me. Even though I work in mostly uh, water-based stuff, there's still chemicals in it. There's definitely chemicals when I clear coat, so just be smart about it. I've heard horror stories about how people end up in not real good health. Um, not, we're not going to make a, a big soapbox statement off of that, but just wear your respirator. I have two levels of paint. I have collected paint over the years, and I have grown uh, the business over the last five years, almost six now. Wow, that's crazy. Um, so I've been in business as a small business for quite some time as an artist. Then I got into airbrushing, and the short story on that is that I picked up an airbrush and I never looked back. I decided I was gonna practice and I did every single day and I still practice because I'm still learning stuff. So I just never stopped, never quit. I have got some cleaner, reducer. There is 91% isopropyl alcohol. I have denatured alcohol around here somewhere as well, but I've got a couple bottles of cleaner, reducer, and actually several bottles of cleaner back there. But then I also have them in smaller bottles, which are easy. So I'll pour off from the big one into the small one. I like the squirt bottles. Works really well because I can dump it right in here when I need to clean the chamber out. And yeah, I'm pretty OCD. So you'll notice that all of these are set up kind of coordinated from light into darker. I've got my fluorescence down here. Uh, I've got some of my off stuff and bigger bottles back there, and I only get bigger bottles of the base colors, stuff that I use on a regular basis. So the moss greens, the detail black magentas, the opaque blacks, the whites, um, I think that's it. Golden, I've, yeah, I've got a wicked golden detail color back there as well. Um, speaking of golden, I try to set up the smaller bottles up front by what they are from light to dark, so that's a little bit variated from the rest of it, but it kind of ended up working out okay because it's still fairly color coordinated. Then the larger bottles, the four ounces, the eight ounces, the 32 ounces, and then I've got inks. So the bench is much clearer than it used to be. Hey, Fluke, shout out to you. He came into the shop the other day. Um, did some live stream, hung out for a little while. We have known each other through YouTube for a while, but this was the first time that I had met him. So I'm going to harass him on live tonight. Go check out Flute Master. If you don't know, he's legendary. He is one of the first, if not the first, angling YouTube channels in the land, in the world. So go check him out. Just some basic stuff over here tools of the trade. I've got some screwdrivers, some chisels, some drill bits, some harder 3D stencils there. I've got some mica powders, um, stuff that I mix and use regularly, um, like for the bluegill blues and for some various colors and gills that I do. These are some inks. Some of them are different than the others. I'm not going to get in the weeds. If you want an exclusive what paints I use, I will be more than happy to do that. But that's not going to happen because that would take us like third. That's an extensive video. 
But if you want to see that, drop me a comment, let me know, and I'll try and put something together. I do have a couple of inks up here. Golden makes a really good airbrush medium to convert other acrylic paints over as long as they're water-based. It works really, really well. So if you have never used it before, airbrush medium is a thing, and that's exactly what it does. Thins fluid acrylic colors. Will it do stuff like Apple Barrel and those types of paints? Yes, it will, but I caution against using paints like that. It's okay if you're starting out, but paints like Folklore and Apple Barrel are not really meant for airbrushing. They're not light fast. They're not... Um, pigment associated to where it'll fade over time and it'll fade quickly so you'll lose that color it's a really quick easy way to paint and when you're learning a lot of students use that stuff but I don't recommend that type of, of acrylic stuff for airbrushing at all but your your better stuff like your college level I would say like the Blick Basics Liquitex Stuff like that, yeah, you can certainly reduce down with airbrush medium. But again, we'll, we're going to do an exclusive colors and what I use and why I use that on another video if you guys want to see that. I've got, um, yep, lots and lots of KBS down there. Yeah, if you're paying attention, you see that I do have the aerosol diamond stuff now. I've got about 12 cans of it. Um, I, haven't, I haven't used it yet. Uh, I've heard that it's usable and I can do it. I'm probably going to experiment and dedicate a video going back over because it's been a while, right? Um, going to dedicate a video and going back over the Diamond KBS and some other things that I'm, I've been using in the last few months or so. Extra jars I keep on hand to keep clean. If something gets stuck to where this lid won't close properly, it's going to affect the oxygenation of the chemicals inside of that clear coat, and it'll harden up on me, and you don't want that to happen. Obviously, I've got my mask here. I have this. Uh, I've been using this uh, air br or airbrush uh, hair dryer for a while. It's, uh, it's an 1875. I just hang it with some picture hanging wire on a screw and it's just easy to pick up. Uh, I will do a video update, shop update on these pieces and this one that are going to be going out. So I'll be shooting a couple after I get done with this. But uh, I keep a wire running across here and then some extra storage which I'm not using as of yet. I'm kind of hesitant to use this here. I'm space confined in this room, so it's a little bit different trying to set up here, which is why I thought that it was important to give you guys a video, because I had much larger space last time, and I'm kind of reduced to having to be functional in a smaller space here, so I thought making this video would be helpful for you guys. But I'm hesitant to put anything in here because that's kind of where I offshoot the spray at. I'm right-handed, so I have a tendency to spray, unless I'm shooting a video, down. So that's, I'm just worried about dust getting on whatever I store there. I have a mini fridge, so if I'm thirsty, I can have a beverage in there, non-alcoholic beverage, because I have a 45 to 50 minute drive home. Back on the walls, I've got my artwork on the walls, and that's another thing, an indicator that this does not get dusty, uh, is that there is no dust after two and a half months of being here in Georgia, there's no dust on any of this. So I'm really impressed with that little, I can't talk enough good things about that fan. Yes, I'm gonna leave you a link. Uh, I painted that with regular old Montana. So we did the bull shad on the wall, simulated the lightning. And then these are some of my Ketchco pictures from below. Ketchco is going to be sending me a big wall decal that's going to go here. And then a Jekyll Bates one is going to go here. So moving down from this, I know I've shown this off. This is uh, my boy Kipto and some of his amazing work that he's done and put into print form. If you don't know who Kipto is, look him up. That's how he spells his name. And he is a world-renowned mural artist and works in this medium. So he's a spray rattle can artist. And uh, I, I, can't, I can't speak enough about how amazing his work is. Just some curio stuff. There is uh, 
one of the things that I've painted for a mystery tackle box respray and some balsa bullshit. Maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. Moving on. <clears throat> Poke speakers because they're really good and they're in a small space. They make this room sound amazing. So yeah, I listen to music when I work, when the shop's not open. Coming down here, I've got some books, some art tools, some extra bottles if I ever need them, extra brushes. Yes, there is a live camera monitoring this room all the time. It is motion sensor oriented. So if anybody were thinking about doing it, please don't. There are a few people that know where the shop is located, but yes, there is a camera and there are cameras all over this place, not just in this room. But I'm not showing you that just for that. I'm showing you for this. <clears throat> Every state that I've lived in, I've tried to understand, and yeah, this is South Carolina, but that's one state up from Georgia. And especially in the mountains, there are some great forage fish. But reference material, I, I speak all the time on how important it is, especially if you're trying to do match the hatch stuff. So, have reference materials. I've got extra boxes, some sketching if I want to sketch out some patterns. I keep my eyes here, extra hooks over here, extra large brushes. I kind of just use this stuff for canvas. I'm also a canvas painter. These are weights to help balance and set my scale. I have to do shipping out of here. So, this is just more spray paint and then all of the different hooks in it, or hooks. <laughs> all the different uh, caps some of they're called fat caps and skinny caps and there's all kinds of stuff associated with the spray paint world and uh, graffiti everybody's got a messy corner i certainly do in this room and this is it so when mike gives me buckets to repaint that's what i'm doing these are things that may have been mistakes or there's issues with it so my job there is to kind of get that all copacetic and happy and then I can paint them as a, as a custom job. I've got GoPro stuff here. It's Friday. I'm getting ready to pull all the GoPro stuff out. So hopefully I'm going to be able to uh, shoot some fishing stuff this weekend. And this weekend I really want to concentrate on finding the bluegill and seeing what they look like here in Georgia. It's going to be a series that I'm starting where we're going to find forage fish, whether that's netting and scooping or on the fish weirs that are kind of the Etowahs full of them, seeing what we can find. And, and that's all in wadeable water and in shallow points and bank fishing. So I'm really excited about that series. So we're going to try and find some bluegill this weekend. And then if we can find some decent stuff, maybe paint it next week for some spray sessions. So I've got tons of ideas on what's going to happen with the spray sessions this year. You guys, maybe if you saw the the year ahead in my three minute Thursday, you'll know what's coming down the pipe. I've got extra speakers set up, my stay, stay safe masks, which I can't say effectively. Um, not that they are not effective, but I just have a hard time saying stay. Yeah. Can't do it. Stay safe. Maybe because I don't, I don't know. Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, what kind of, okay. You guys ask what kind of this is a Manfredo or Manfrotto. This is an Italian one. It's not ridiculous expensive, but these things can take a beating. For being aluminum, they're lightweight, but I have absolutely beat the crap out of it for the last four years, and it's doing pretty well. I keep fun lights around just for, because <laughs> no explanation needed. Um, I've got gloves. I've got shipping stuff, extra eyes, hooks, extra junk basically i mean who doesn't love crayons because they smell good right um those are stickers decals that you guys get when you ask for them or pay for them there's my scale that i was talking about that i weight and balance what else we have in here some canvases the gloves that i was talking about earlier extra keep this stuff around all the mesh and netting and screening and I've got tons of videos using stuff like this so now we're not going to go into what all I have 
And then coming down the bottom, I've just got some extra supplies, some envelopes for shipping decals. I've got, and I really, Paul Styles, you have been calling me, and I'm so sorry. I've got to return your calls. I haven't had a chance to. Huge, huge, huge. I, I'm sorry. I will call you as soon as I can if you don't know Paul Styles. All you need to know is uh, he's amazing, and he's been in the industry for a very long time, and I have a wonderful box of jigs and spinners and stuff that he hand did and sent my way when I was in Arkansas. And I've got a couple videos talking, singing his praises. I've got some more Ketchco stuff there. I've got Ketchco stuff there in the other office. That's pretty much it. I'm thinking about refinishing this desk that Mike made me, which was amazing. He actually made the desk because the one I had was a piece of crap and not functional, so he just made one. Thank you, Mike. Shipping, extra paint, reference materials. I know, we've gone long, that's okay. Lots and lots and lots of reference materials. This is my Georgia one that just came in the mail the other day. Freshwater fish. Highly recommend getting one for your state. When I was in the Ozarks, this book was invaluable. Missouri and Arkansas. That's the waters I fished. Um, fly tying, fly fishing, Lefty Cray, Dave Whitlock, my heroes of fly fishing, even though I absolutely suck at fly fishing. I'm determined to learn this year. I've got some hooks, the upper end stuff, some extra paint and supplies. Um, if you don't know by now, I'm a huge graffiti nut. I have a mad appreciation for it. And I do a little bit on the side. Peacock bass, I love that. The stereo setup, Bluetooth capable. This thing is awesome. It can run all kinds of different stuff, including cameras, including the, the TVs we have set up out in the storefront area. And then um, the desk area. You guys know I love stickers and I have earned and collected these over the years. If you guys want to add your sticker to my pile on the desk, I'll find a spot for it. The address that, for shipping is down below. So if you guys want to send me stuff, I will be happy to display it for you. I have done that over the years. Unfortunately, as I keep getting more, a lot of the times it covers what was already there. So I try and keep it fresh for you guys. Acrylics. We can get into the weeds on that stuff too, but here's a helpful tip. Always keep it tipped down so the tip doesn't dry out because the worst thing you want is a brand new acrylic marker that you can't use. I always keep a little thing of water here because if I'm doing hand detailing with a brush, it's nice to be able to clean this without having to leave my shop. So another little quick tip. All the pens, you guys ask me in every single video what I use to sign my, and I'm gonna do it again here. Let's see if we can find it. Where might it be? There we go. It's a Uniball Vision Elite. Uniball Vision Elite. Japanese. Four pack will cost you about eight bucks. Waterproof. Light fast. Easy to coat over. Does not bleed out when you put clear coat or epoxy on it. So just some different brushes. Watercolor mixes, which is a great color mixing tool. So I highly recommend because the same type of color mixing and tonal shading applies in all paints. You could do this with an acrylic. It's just watercolor just seems to be a lot more comprehensive. Extra paints, extra paints, watercolors, acrylic paints, oil paints, a whole nother box of watercolors because I'm a watercolor artist as well. The cool carpet. So just to finish this video off, I've worked for everything that you see in this office. The only thing that was not that I didn't pay for out of my pocket was this air compressor. It was a gift from Mike when I moved, when he asked me to uproot my life in Arkansas and come to Georgia. You, you just can't turn Mike down. So it was a gift from him and I'm grateful for it. Mystery tackle box stuff, a little portable heater that I need to replace the bulb in because it makes a faux fireplace, which is quaint. Some of my cool stuff. So, Gerald Novick, the legend himself, one of the best painters in the industry and, and in the world, um, painted these little guys, which are cool. 
and gifted them to me and he painted this gorgeous trout on this mega on the grenade so the things that are near and dear to my heart like Pete's right up here from Reckless Rodents and this um, wiggle wart from Wes in Arkansas um, those are the things that will always be displayed in this office you saw over there what I have on that speaker but um, and then more of my artwork uh, military tags from the arm my army days always keep this is another helpful tip I always keep these right here because it'll let me know how moist the air is how humid and my average temperature so always a good idea to have that um, another piece dear, dear and near to my heart was Andy in Ireland made this big mural on some dry rock drywall that he brought into a shop when he was here from Ireland up in Maryland and some more of my watercolor work watercolor work um, that's my watercolor work these are mine obviously the Ketchco the flag because you have to display the flag it's un-American if you don't so do it that's um, <laughs> Alex Blackwell spooning John B holding up a bull shad and I think they're on the ir no they're not in Ireland they were off the African coast in this one so just some cool stuff stuff that's personal that means a lot and that concludes the comprehensive studio tour here at Jekyll Bates and Bullshad Studios I hope you guys have a phenomenal weekend I will see you on the flip side of things go fishing get outside this weekend if it's nice where you are cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates. I almost forgot. This is where I edit. This is my editing desk and it holds junk, <laughs> which you guys don't need to see. And then this is my part of the wall, which we talked about a little bit in the three minute Thursday. So there's the end of the video. See ya.